Now you might not actually see this material presented this way because instead of focusing on lambda, lambda is the percent decay per day or per second. But as you might already know, actually very often the scientists prefer to pr focus on the half-life. So we have to see how the half-life applies here. So the symbol for the half-life is T with a subscript one half. So this is a small one over two down here for one half. It's just a subscript that's a label. So this is a good symbol for half-life. Do you know what the half-life means? What does it mean at the half-life? So it says the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. What does that tell you? So it, uh, um, it'll be like at a half of its half-life of the particles, I guess, um, at that specific time. Right? So after the first 5,730 years, half of the original nuclei will be gone. And then if you wait another 5,730 years, another half will be gone, which means that you're down to a quarter of what you started. And then if you wait another 5,730 years, another half will be gone, which means that you're down to 12.5% of what you started. Remember that from a mathematician standpoint, we never quite get to zero. We just keep cutting the number of nuclei in half every time a half-life passes. So in terms of our graph, I guess this would represent a half-life because this is how long it takes to get about halfway down from the original vertical point. It took around this much time. This represents, I think, about half of the original amount. So this would represent a half-life. Do you get to use a calculator on your test? Yeah, you do. Okay. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. thousand one hundred and ninety years. And as a hint, we should be able to do this without a calculator. So how would we work this out? Um, um, maybe you can do a simple calculation on your calculator if you like. Sounds good. Now it's best for this type of problem to make a table. How much time has passed after one half-life? fraction of the original nuclei will remain. Yeah. Then how much time has passed after two half-lives? Use your calculator if you want. Um, 11,460. And what percent of the original nuclei remain? 25%. After three half-lives, uh, how much time has passed? Seventeen. 
and what percent of the original nuclei remain. Which you correctly remember is one eighth. So you're right that one eighth would remain. All right, so this is a good way to solve this type of problem just with a table. What you don't want to do is just do it in your head. It's much better to make a little table like this. But what do you need to put in the table? You should put the number of half-lives that have passed, and then the actual amount of time that has passed, and then the fraction that remains. If you actually work out each step on your table, things will make more sense. However, what if they'd asked you what percentage has disappeared after three half-lives, or after 17,190 years? What percentage has disappeared? Now, from the problem we were just doing, I think I asked you what percent remained after a certain amount of time. How much time passed there? 17,190 years. So the question is, what percentage would have disappeared in that time? Um, 86.5. That's right. So in that same time period, uh, 17,190 years. we would have 12.5% left and 87.5% gone. Now I wanted to point out then a common trap is suppose they had simply asked you what percent is gone after 17,190 years, many students mistakenly say 12.5% gone because they don't think clearly that there's a big difference between the amount that's left and the amount that's gone. So the note that you want to have in your notes for this you have to pay close attention to whether the question is asking for the percentage of the nuclei that remains or the percentage of the, percentage of the nuclei that are gone. Here I made it easy because first I asked you for the amount left and then I asked you for the amount gone. But if the question just asked directly for the amount gone, it's easy to not realize that there's two separate steps here. So what type of question is easiest to answer with our equations? Well, what does N stand for, the percent left or the percent gone? Yeah, or really the number left. N tells you the number left. Or A tells you the number left. And then this would represent something like, this would be amount that's gone if you subtract the original minus the uh, uh, beginning amount. This would tell you the amount gone. Anyway, the point is, we, we showed how to solve that last problem using a table. Well, notice that the table tells you directly the percent that's left. And it takes an extra thought step to figure out the percent that's gone. Figuring out the percent that is gone is a little bit tricky. The key thing is, even if they ask you to focus on how much is gone, you should start by figuring out how much is left. Because the equations are designed to work with how much is left. And then at the very last second, you can translate to how much is gone. That's why when I had a table on the board, I didn't just say percent. I said percent remaining. You always have to label exactly what the percent stands for. Otherwise, it's easy to confuse these two things. So we can see that if the number of half-lives that have passed is an integer number of half-lives, you can solve problems with a table, just like we did. However, what if only say, what if say three and a half half-lives have passed, or 3.79 half-lives, then the table isn't really a convenient yeah. way to solve things. So there's an equation for that. <coughs> Remember, this is our equation for working with lambda. Here's the equation for working with half-life. We've already learned how to solve problems where you're given lambda, but we also need to know how to solve problems where we're given the half-life. Let's review what these symbols stand for. What does N stand for? Uh, the number of particles remaining after t. After time t, good. So then t stands for how much time has passed. N sub zero is? The original of the particles. Good. So as we've seen, this is not how many nuclei have decayed. It's how many nuclei are left. And then what does this little thing down here stand for? Half. Yeah, so this is T sub 1 half. That's just our symbol for half-life. Every nucleus has a different half-life, and they'll just tell you the half-life or ask you to look it up in the table. By the way, the table of half-lives that you might need in your homework is on page 690 of the textbook. On page 690, you might have to look at some half-lives, or, or maybe they'll just give them to you in the homework problems. Now, we know that the radioactivity is proportional to the number of nuclei.
So we have the same exact equation for A as for N. We already saw that we had the same equation for A and N when we were working with lambda. So we have the same deal here. We can have the same equation for A or for N because they're proportional to each other. Don't forget this negative sign over here. And again, because of this negative sign, this shows that as T increases, the right-hand side decreases. Because of this negative sign, as T goes up, the right-hand side decreases. Well, we know that has to be the case because we have these decreasing exponential curves over here. 